Welcome to Off the Press, the newspaper review. We'll take a look at some of the newspapers and what's making the headlines and, assess it, and dissect it rather as much as we can and as much as time would allow us to do so. I have with me to review the paper virtually uh, Chris Wandu, who is the publisher for CKN News. Good morning, Mr. Wandu. Good morning, Amaka. Nice to have you this nice morning. To, nice to have you uh, run through this morning program with me, though virtually. We can't wait to have you in Studio Live post-COVID. Thank you very much. All Look right. forward to that. All right. We'll begin. We have several papers to take a look this morning, but we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. And it will be displayed for you right now, already displayed. Now, in the Punch newspaper, it says... Uh, IPPIS, uh, petrol scarcity looms as Pengerson and Newpeng threaten strike. That story is on page 24 of the no Punch newspaper. Now sit up or be fired, Lawan tells a service chief after meeting with Buhari. That story is also on page 20, uh, 35 of the Punch newspaper. Wadamo's trial, uh, trial resumes today. Uh, cause mount for killer soldiers prosecution. It's on page 8 of the Punch newspaper. Demolition. Ghanaian thugs threatened attacks, says security head. Uh, that story is also on page 35 of the Punch newspaper. The big story for the Punch newspaper. APC Edo set for showdown as governor uh, primary holds today on page 2 of the Punch newspaper and page 10 as well. Gatherings, APC is acting as if it's above the laws, uh, says state government. Um, protesters demand a National Working Committee dissolution, emergency neck meeting. After suspension, Gadom writes INEC, says a door primary is illegal. All right, is a Yamu, um, Sorry, that's another paper I'm running to. Uh, two, kill, two killed and bombs. Banks and others shot in Oshun, um, Oshun State. That story is on page four, I believe, of the Nation newspaper, of the Punch newspaper, I beg your pardon. Um, then we also have um, two picture stories there. We have two picture stories. Um, yeah, already mentioned there. And the two killed, banks and others shot in as Oshun Kulti's, um clash. We also have Ogun Council official assaulting woman in viral video arrested. Uh, that's, that's good news. I don't know if you saw that, but we'll come to it. Lagos sacks Loma contractors over widespread fraud. And these and others, we have the punch on the punch newspaper. Um, we will go now to Chris Wandu. Chris Wandu, are you there? I'm with you. Okay, so which, which of the stories, which one is catching your attention this morning? APC Peace Panel gets 170 petitions, blames COVID-19 for delayed sittings. That's on page two. Uh, and then uh, Buhari assures APC governors of end to parties a serial crisis. Protesters demand National Working Co uh, d uh, Committee dissolution emergency net meeting. So which one? Let's begin uh, straight away. Well, well, definitely the APC crisis uh, mm -hmm. definitely will catch this attention. Uh, for me, what, what is happening in APC now is uh, likened to if you are... Uh, if you, if you are one, uh, one of those that used to watch um, some comedy program on TV, I will tell you back to um, late Amaka Igwe's um, court comedy series, Fuji House of Commotion. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so if you watch that program, that is what is happening in APC now. So I would say APC House of Commotion because uh, the, the problem facing uh, rocking APC now is multifaceted. Mm. Uh, initially, we thought it was just that a do crisis that has gone beyond a do crisis from a do crisis to end of this day. And even now, in uh, River State, as of yesterday, uh, some people have just suspended even the, the newly uh, inaugurated uh, uh, person in the, that's supposed to represent, that they have taken over from 
and Gadom um, in the NWC. So is a it, it, it goes to show some level high level of a party discipline in the ruling party, and they seem not to have learned any lesson um, because this was exactly what happened to PDP uh, throughout the 2015 election, where you will have two uh, national chairmen. Uh, um, going for the national chairman, you remember the days of McAfee and uh, uh, Amadou Sharif, um, two of them laying claim to the chairmanship of that. So now it, it has even gone further than that. that even the APC governors are now um, divided. Um, the anti oshomales governors um, had to, were the ones that uh, they visited the president yesterday um, to raise some eyebrow of what is happening. Uh, within the APC and the rest of them. So um, the APC had its hands full as it goes into uh, two elections in the next few months in Ondo and um, also in Edo State. Uh, in Edo State, you also realize that the governor is having a problem with the deputy governor who just a few days ago have resigned as a member of that party too. So um, we're going to start this panel, out, but APC needs to get its stuff together because it all seems not to be well with the party for now. All right, let's move away from APC a bit and uh, take a look at other uh, matters from that paper. Um, now, we have also in the same paper uh, the story of Wadume, which I know you recall. Again, killer soldiers not in court, judge absent. Uh, federal government. Yes, uh, yeah, you can go ahead. Yes. yes, on the Wadume case, this seems to be taking too long. The last we heard about it was that. The soldiers that, that were involved in the killing mm. or alleged killing, mm. we are not in court. And um, mm. I think the AG, AGF, um, particularly, uh, would read their name from um, part of those to be prosecuted. The impression is that um, since they are military men, that they might, um, the, the military may decide to try them uh, internally. And um, so they might not be, they may not be able to appear in court. But if it's taking too long, irrespective of whatever anybody feels, then some some policemen were killed, um, and um, for no just reason, um, and that's and we are still talking about whether to prosecute or not to prosecute. That doesn't say well about our our judicial system, um, and that in, that itself is not good enough. So I think we should move on fast to make sure that all those that participate in that killing are brought to book. And punishment made that immediately. All these uh, necessary delays and uh, technical technicality should not be allowed to 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 take place at all. Uh, these are Nigerians. These are security men. These are uh, people that had families. And if this issue is not tackled properly, it also double the media, the, the spirit of some of our security agencies who, on a daily basis, try to um, cover all these unnecessary security challenges when across the board. So. That is the need for us with the AGF and those uh, judge on the court is in session. Nobody should say that the court is the courts are in session. Um, they might not be as full as they used to be, but the courts are in session. I believe that this is a case that uh, must take a front line uh, seat so that um, all those that participated in that study have to be brought to um, and to justice as quickly as possible. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you for that intervention uh, there. Uh, but, but what what there is still on that paper? If it will be placed now again back on the screens, uh, we, we look at other issues that have been raised there. But I, I don't know whether you really saw there is particularly a case somewhere down there. The Ogun Council official assaulting a woman in viral video arrested. I'm not sure whether you saw that, but I can quickly you know. Explain. So it's a video of a woman who had gone I, I in. Know. You saw it. I know about it. Okay. So, about so, so what, what's your thought? I, I, that that's one of the most uh, brutal uh, incidents I've ever seen in recent time. Right. Um, it, it, it happened at Ojodu uh, Abiodu uh, area of Ojodu in uh, if for local government area of Ogo State. Yeah. Where a woman was arrested for whatever reason, violating whatever, whatever they, they said, and they were deflating the tire and asked her to pay about 15,000 naira. And why? Uh, because of the way they were going about it, the woman tried to um, put up a video, at least to uh, to put up a video showing the officer, the officer that was in charge. And the next thing the man did was to start beating and yeah. hitting the woman and the rest of them. 
um, the video went viral. And um, it's good enough that immediately the state government came out with the president, so that the chairman of the transition, chairman of the local government came out with a statement that all the officers that were involved in that incident have been relieved of duty uh, without pay, and the um, decision will be taken against them. And I believe that, uh, you, you know, Amaka, that's the, that's the beauty of uh, social media this day. Right. Uh, some of these things have been happening in the past, and we don't get to know about them. Mm -hmm. So, but the social media has made every individual um, uh, is, is a kind of journalist uh, on the move. Uh, we are actions and in action, some, some people um, are recorded and they're put into public view. So, and that is also that, that is also why we are having the the high rate of um, information on rape across board. That's because right. some of the things have been happening in the past, but um, there has not been happening to, be to showcase them but because of the social media. So, in as much as some people believe that social media um, it, it has its challenges, but it also has its positive aspect, which is part of what we are saying now that most of the information that people uh, that got hid in the past now is coming to the fore and the people are getting to know about it. So mm -hmm. um, the action of the info local government uh, officers are, is condemnable and um, I think that uh, more action should be taken against them. If that man could be doing that in the public, I just wonder what to be doing in his home. And uh, the, I just beat the wife. Um, so it's just unfortunate. Yes. All right, before, I let's, before we uh, sign out on uh, the Punch newspaper, uh, the, the, the federal government decides on interstate travel ban, others uh, next week. I just want to quickly ask you, is it, is it safe for us actually to move, start moving around? Even though, yes, there are also conversations around economic hardship and businesses, people have to you know, get back their lives, so to say. Where are we? America, for me, um, the interstate uh, ban has failed totally, and I say completely, totally and completely. Um, there have been so many breach, uh, um, even from those that initially that initiated the move. Don't forget that the interstate ban uh, was initiated by the Governor's Forum, and um, which they recommended to the President, and the President approved. But within days of that uh, ban, the Governor started, so like those in the North, started moving their majorities from one state to another against the uh, interstate ban. And the governors are also be moving from one, one state to the other, some are flying to Abuja, some are coming to Lagos and moving more to us. So it's a question of um, some, uh, if, you, if you read the book, Animal Farm by George Orwell, um, of some animals being uh, uh, bigger and better than the, uh, the others. Uh, we, are not, we are not working to talk when it comes to the issue of interstate ban. And on a daily basis, if you just come to Lagos here, um, if you get to Bega, you see the number of vehicles going in, in and out of Lagos on a daily basis or hindered, despite the interstate ban. The same thing is happening across the state, even in Abuja, Kanu, even at the point that um, the Kanu State Governor has to come in and say that a lot of people are moving into the state. So, uh, personally, since we are um, gradually um, pulling off um, uh, the lockdown, I personally I just feel that uh, we should just unlock. And uh, let's start gradually uh, moving into uh, uh, regarding our economy and rejigging it. But now it is going to be um, everybody to himself. So people should start uh, obeying the various protocols be put in place by the NCDC and the federal government in the issue of distancing, uh, social distancing, using of mask, washing hands, and rest of them. And let's go back. If to, but talking about it as state, I will tell you that. That interstate ban is um, interstate ban is not working at all, all and right. uh, we need to look at. It. Except our uh, our uh, security officials will be able to enforce as they're supposed to do. Because the problem with our security agencies, you see them collecting money from people at every point and allow them to cross. That in itself defeats the whole essence of that interstate ban. Mm. All right, let's go to the Nation newspaper. Um, Chris Wandu, uh, the Nation newspaper says. Buratai orders commanders to raise stakes against insurgents. On page 5, Clark, Modo, and 14 others sue Buhari over appointments. That story is on page 3. Uh, Bello heads North panel on security. Uh, Chukweze makes first start for Villarreal. That's um, something for sports fans there. And then the big story. Uh, external is anti Oshomala uh, governors submit position to Buhari. 
and then external reserves down by $261 million. That story is on page 25. And Lagos London flight to resume August the 24th. Good news, bit of good news there. All right, APC National Working Committee inaugurates uh, bombs as Giadom's replacement. My victory signals end of Edo APC crisis, says Ize Yamu. That story is on the front page there, but it's continued on page four of the nation's newspaper. Uh, we have a picture story there. Uh, well, the characters are quite, 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 not quite um, legible. But it has to do with suspected cyber crime uh, criminals and bank account hackers who specialize in taking, in sending fake alerts when they, par when they were paraded uh, at the police station. Wow, they send fake alerts, alerts. interesting. Now here, are the, the, the suspects are there with the laptop, as you can see. We go to the other story, COVID-19, federal government laments setback in battle. Um, Non-compliance with protocols worrisome. That story is on page five. Ondo APC asks deputy governor to vacate office. Wow. On page 28. And policeman dismissed finals. Which policeman and why? On page 26. We also have the figures, the COVID-19 figures displayed there globally. We're at 9.1 uh, with 20,000 deaths. Oh, sorry. No, that's for Nigeria, rather. With 473,000 plus deaths and 4.9 recoveries. And for Nigeria, we have passed the 20,000 mark. We are at 20,919. Just a little bit away from 21,000. That's scary. Uh, we have deaths up to 625, I believe. And then we have active cases of 13,000 plus. And new cases today is at 600 plus. All right, Mr. Mwandu, let's come to you now. Yes. All right, which story yes. do you want us to begin with in the nation's the nation newspaper? Well, um, to to highlight um, attracted my attention, the first and foremost is the uh, they do APC gubernatorial promise that was said yesterday. We are the young one. Um, um, that of interest seems to be home and dusted. Um, where the problem seems to be now is that of the PDP. Um, because if you're aware, uh, just last night, the Federal High Court sitting in Port Harcourt has uh, restrained uh, um, the uh, our Governor Godwin of Baseke from participating in the PDP primaries that's coming up in a few days' time. Um, that is the breaking news now. And so I don't know how what is going to happen, whether that case, that issue will be vacated before the primaries that's coming up in the next few days. Uh, if it's not, then that means that uh, he may not be participating. So the it has the fight has moved from APC to PDP now, where the governor of Edo State is now fighting for his uh, political life again mm -hmm. uh, under the PDP that he just moved into a few days ago. And uh, that is that. So as the days progresses, and uh, we're going to see what is going to happen, whether that, um, that interlocutory injunction will be packeted uh, by the courts. If not, then Obaseke will not be participating in the PDP mm -hmm. primary. That is one. Then, uh, moving on, um, the Edas, I'm also looking at the uh, story on the Edas statesmen that are yeah. suing the president. Yep. Uh, well, yes, um, that in itself is good. It's good for democracy. If there's a breach by the president on the issue of uh, federal character, mm -hmm. because that is when trying the constitution of the federal Republic of Nigeria and captured in the Federal Character uh, Commission that um, um, positions across board should be equally uh, distributed among uh, Nigerians, irrespective of where they come from or state of origin. Or every state and region in this country must be able to be represented. If, in their, uh, in their wisdom, the other statesman feels that the president has breached that, uh, the code of conduct, uh, sorry, uh, character. Um, um, in, the, uh, in putting people in the right position and in just across the board, and they feel strongly that he has uh, heard, then they have a right to sue him, and uh, we we'll, we'll see how that will pan out. You know, there's, there's been this agitation and there's been this uh, uh, saying here and there that uh, the president has not been up and running when it comes to import distribution of offices. Um, uh, even um, just few, some few weeks back, uh, retired major, uh, a retired major, 
a very um, revered uh, senior uh, uh, senior Nigerian from the north. I am also raised the issue that the president has not been doing what he ought to do. That there should be some kind of uh, airport distribution of offices and the rest of them. So um, let's see how this goes. Uh, if they're able to see this through, that in itself may be able to also enhance our political terrain. We are um, those in leadership should see themselves as representing Nigeria, not just representing a particular section of the country. So that also is a story um, that attracted my attention. That's great. We, we will leave it there for the Nation newspaper. In the interest of time, just take uh, Guardian. I'll lead, read out the headlines. I will take just a story, unfortunately, uh, because we are running out of time for the next bulletin. Investors shun bank shares despite 260 uh, naira, billion naira first quarter profit. That story is the big story for the Guardian newspaper. It's there on the front page. And it's also continued on page six. And we have picture stories also. Is a Yamu get a do APC ticket? Tons of Asaki to return to party. And then we have, of course, the COVID-19 um, figures that we've already mentioned to you. And lastly, we have Southern leaders initiate 50 billion naira suit against Buhari over alleged marginalization. Uh, we've talked, just finished talking about that. No state is COVID-19 free when CDC insists. And last story is on page three. Resign honorable now, Ondo APC tells deputy governor, and police arrest Goba aspirant impersonating Kiari's widow. That's too unfortunate. All right, which two stories can we, or one story, can we quickly take, um, Mr. Wandu? I am looking at the uh, COVID-19. Uh, yeah. We are on the rise. Um, mm. If you can see that the figure coming in is that we've hit 21,000 mark. That in itself is, um, is a very high one. And we're not even enough um so that means that um the, the we are still on the rise uh, we've not gotten to the call and uh, nigerians should see this uh, as a very serious matter and um there have been a lot of uh, we've lost a lot of um, nigerians to this pandemic and as of last time um the the debt has um, exceeded over 500 in nigeria already. so um so we we it, it is high time that uh, people take this as serious as possible, not just see it as just one of those uh, gimmicks by government to just ask people to stay at home and the rest of them. Mm. In the United States, the death rate has hit over 120,000 people. And, um, and it's in with the mother in the United Kingdom, Italy, and other uh, parts of the And these are even countries that have um, better medical facilities than we do. Right. So if you have 120,000 people dying in the United States with all the facility, medical facilities, then you can see that that is a, it is a big problem for us. So mm. we should just adhere to, to the strict instruction by NCDC and the Federal Ministry of um, Health. And also the states also should do more in trying to make sure that people keep uh, adhere to the instructions uh, given by these agencies. And also some of those that have been looking forward to even opening um, schools and the rest of them should think twice uh, because I know of a state that said they are going to be open schools by 29th. Mm. They should think twice that because these children are much more, even more vulnerable than the adults. Right. So we should just be careful with you know, our economy and our system and people just take this seriously. Mm. Um, that is this pandemic that can hit anybody at any given point in time. And that we, that we don't even have the capacity to even handle it because all the isolation centers are practically filled up now. That is why people are being as advised when they, they are advised to go home and just take some medication and the rest of them. That is not good enough. We have a serious problem and challenges on our hands as far as the COVID-19 is concerned. All right, still on COVID-19, and your last thoughts on the fact that NCDC is saying, well, no state is coronavirus-free, but Cross River State is saying, well, our state has no single case of coronavirus. How do we manage this conflicting information that's also brewing uh, mistrust? Yeah, my but I thought I had to conclude that um, a lawmaker in cross about died of COVID-19. Has that been denied? There is not denied. That means that we are just like the ostrich that put our head um, right in the sand and uh, why our body is just exposed. We shouldn't play politics with the issue of COVID-19. Um, Kogi State and Crossover seems to be the, the two states um, that tend to be pretending that all is well. Um, but if this is, if they've been allowing people for people to be tested, adequately as they're supposed to be. I don't think that any state will be... It's not a question of uh, whether you have it or not. Even if you deny that you don't have it, if your people are dying of it and you are not making disclosure, that in itself is putting a lot of lives in danger. So nobody is deriving any joy in saying that a particular state or...
Oh. This is where people have denied that they didn't have it, and then you come to find it. So uh, we shouldn't be poly playing politics with issue of COVID-19. It's not just worth it at all. All right. That's a good way to wrap it. We shouldn't be playing politics with COVID-19. It's not worth it at all. I completely agree. Thank you so very much, Chris Mwandu, the publisher of CKN News, for being with me this morning to take a look at the national dailies. Do stay safe out there, too. Thank you very much for having me. Have a blessed day. Amen. And that's how we call it a wrap on Of The Press. Remember, the time is 8.30, Monday to Friday, here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye.